Hiya. Uh, so hopefully the last example was nice. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to do is look at one of the key components and see if we can extrapolate a little more. Uh, so what I mean here is that no, like the main thing we used um, was this fact. So we used the fact that p times 1 minus p is less than or equal to 1 fourth, right? Um, and what this means is the further we are from p, the more error we're going to see. Um, in other words, our normal curve approximation is going to be further and further from reality. Um, we're going to be further on the, the normal curve. So what we want to do is we want to kind of adjust our normal curve to be better for most of the reality, right? So like, um, like for example, what happens if we have one over a bajillion for n, right? Um, even if we have a really, really tiny n or a really, really tiny p, it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter how big our n is. Um, it's not going to be a very good approximation if our probability is one in a bajillion. Um, but it turns out we can actually measure how good the normal approximation n is for gi some given n and p. So what we're going to do is we're going to let n, big n, uh, n, p. Uh, here, I'll do this with this little highlight. Yes. We let n a to b denote the normal approximation to the binomial probability p of a to b. Um, so this is normal approximation. Uh, this is binomial probability. Uh, and we're going to define a value, WNP, which is basically going to be the worst error. Uh, I should do this in blue. Uh, WNP is going to be called the worst error. And basically, it's how bad our error is from the normal approximation to the binomial, prob uh, binomial uh, probability. Yeah. Um, so basically, what we have is WNP is going to be equal to this formula here. So this is exactly what I'm saying that the maximum, it's the maximum error, so max error, um, which is just looking at the difference between our normal approx or our binomial probability, binomial, and our normal probability, a uh, normal approximation. So how big of a gap is there between the two? And to kind of see what I'm talking about, let's run through a quick example. Um, if we have um, p is equal to one half, then Looking at this um, WNP, what we end up getting is WN one half um, for n greater than or equal to 10, we get that it's less than or equal to 0 0.01. So it's off by just 1%, which is not too bad. Um, after 10 trials, that's nothing. Um, that means after 10 coin flips, you have a only 1% chance that you're like uh, you're within the, you can calculate how good this coin flip is, whether it's reality or not. Um, and then for n is equal to 20 or greater, then we're already down to half a percent. So like for the p is equal to one half, this is an amazing approximation, the normal approximation. It's phenomenal. But what happens if it's not equal to one half? Uh, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to set p is equal to one, one over 10. And I'm going to run this calculation 100 times. So n is equal to 100. And this gives me the following histogram. So this is the following distribution, um, in other words. Um, so 10 should appear this many times. Uh, this is 10, uh, this is nine, etc. So we should be able to see this appear this many times. Um, and if I were to draw the uh, normal curve on top of it, you're going to notice that the normal curve doesn't really approximate as well. It's almost shifted a little bit, right? So it's shifted a little bit to the right, uh, left, sorry, shifted a little to the left. Um, and so this, no, so this little push that's happening here is actually known as the skewness. So it's like skewed a little bit to one direction. And this is known as the skewness of the distribution. Um, and so what we're going to try is, oh no, why is that link over there? Uh, this is probably a thing to skewness. Um, I'll try to make your link correct. Um, so I'll have to update these notes. Uh, so what we'll try to do is push the normal, what we're going to do is take this normal curve and we're going to say, okay, if this normal curve is off by a little, well, let's just take the normal curve, right? So take this um, normal curve here um, and let's just shift it. Like let's move it a little in this direction. So 
so that it's like, I don't know, like here, so that it better approximates our curve. That was a bad drawing, but it's hard to draw freehand. Anyway, um, so let's shift it a little to one direction so it actually approximates better our binomial distribution. Um, so we're not going to go too far into detail how this kind of works, uh, but it turns out what we're going to do is actually take the first, the derivative of our third derivative of our function. So remember the function that we've been working with for our normal curve is given by one over two pi square root of two pi e to the minus one half um, z squared. Um, and here a lot of times what we had, so this is the standard one. And remember, a lot of times we saw this is equal to b minus uh, the expected value. Um, I guess most of the time we use mu here and sigma, right? Um, so this is kind of what we saw for um, our z most of the time. Um, and so after taking the third derivative, this is something that you should be able to do. We're get, we can find out that this is equal to 3z minus z cubed uh, times phi of z as long as I did this correctly. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to skew our normal curve by this kind of little correction factor. Um, and so this gives us what's called the skew normal curve. Skew normal curve. Uh, and basically what we have for this one is we let f of z be equal to phi of z. So we take our normal distribution function, our normal curve, our normal normal curve, and we remove a little bit of the skewness factor, or we're gonna move by a little bit. So we're gonna subtract off some number, and the number is given by uh, this function. Uh, so we get one divided by six times skewness of NP um, and the third derivative of phi. So this skewness of NP is given by this little formula here. Um, I wrote it down um, in the thing. So you can kind of, you don't have to rewrite it a second time. Um, but notice how it's dependent on um, our sigma, so our standard deviation here, right? Uh, and so it's basically dependent on how spread out this normal distribution is and stuff like that. Now remember that this skew function is only true for the binomial distribution. We'll get into um, the more general cases in the future, but for now, just worry about this little thing. Like it's going to get more complicated in the future, but for now, we're just worrying about the binomial distribution. Um, so yeah, so I'll stop um, here. Yeah, I'll stop here for this little part. Oh no, I'll finish and then we'll example. Yeah, okay. Um, so notice that what we have is when I, if I were to set P is equal to one and a half, uh, so let me, if I set P is equal to half, then let's see what happens here. So if I take skew, skew of NP, right, this is equal to one minus two P divided by Sigma. Well, if I look at P, I have one half. I don't care what Sigma is. I have one minus one over Sigma. So I have zero over Sigma. So this is zero. So what this gives us is that the skew factor is going to be equal to zero. And in particular, this whole little part here, it's zero times something, so it's all going to be zero. So in other words, when p is equal to one half, we're not moving our function at all. There's no skew factor when p is equal to one half, which is nice. This is kind of what we would expect because p equal to one half is like the good um, approximation. Now, Skew itself can be either positive or negative, right? It depends on what's up with our probability. It depends on what's up with our um, sigma. Um, and you'll notice that if P is less than one half, uh, then it's going to be positive. And what we do in this case is we see that it's going to be skewed a little to the right. If P is greater than one half, then it's going to be skewed a little to the left. So it's dependent on this P that we put into this function. Um, and so what this gives us is actually a second way to approximate the binomial distribution. Uh, and so basically what we have is the second way is, well, we kind of do the same thing. So the probability from zero to B successes um, is approximately equal to phi of uh, Z. So here Z is going to be equal to B um, plus one half minus uh, mu over sigma, um, here mu, remember, is equal to NP, uh, and sigma is equal to um, 
n p one minus p. So we have the kind of b part, and now we need the the a part is zero, but we're going to add the correction factor, right? So here we add a correction factor. N p uh, z squared minus one phi of z, um, and yeah. This is basically what we end up having. So this little term here on the right, this is known as the um, correction factor, the skewness correction. Uh, and we'll stop here for um, this video and we'll look at an example in the next video. So I will see you then.